guys. Tim Bratz here with the Legacy Wealth Show. I got a good buddy with me, Mr. Mike Fallett. Mike, how are you, buddy? Doing well, man. Good, man. Um, I'm excited about this episode. This has been something that's been on my bucket list for a very long time is, is to write a book, right? And uh, to me, it's like a massive, massive feat and huge accomplishment, something I'm super excited about. And to you, it's somebody, something that you do every single day, right? And so it's probably very similar to like you wanting to go out and buy an apartment building. It's like, oh, I want to go out and buy this building and own this asset and have this, this, this legacy wealth. Um, and it seems, you know, almost insurmountable to you. But to me, it's like, dude, it's second nature. I buy a couple every single month, right? And so it's, it's really exciting to have you on the show because you're an expert in this space. And I know there's a lot of people who are entrepreneurs that listen to my show that want to go out and write a book and have the influence and have the credibility that a book gives them and essentially the best business card ever. So um, I want to talk to you about all that stuff, man. You ready to rock? <laughs> well said, man. Well said. I'm always ready. Let's do this. All right, dude. Cool. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your background and kind of where you're coming from, how you got started in the whole book business and publishing business and um, a little bit more about like what your business exactly does. Okay. Yeah. So thanks so much for having me on, man. This is, uh, you know, I, I watched a couple of your episodes and, uh, you know, you guys are all about real estate. I love being around the DM family, Mark Evans, you, you guys really understand business. Uh, I come from a background of marketing. My passion is truly based off of marketing. So give you a little backstory. I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I own dream starters publishing at dreamstarterpublishing.com. And all we do is we create books in a very short amount of time. We streamline the ghostwriting process so you as the entrepreneur can continue to buy buildings, build your real estate portfolio, make connections, do what you do best. And then you have someone who's a ghostwriter and a marketing ghostwriter at that that's going to help you bring your story to life in a very short amount of time so you can basically grow your brand and increase your credibility just like you said. So I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have no background in books until about five years ago. So I was in the corporate world, I was in sales, probably heard of some big commercial companies that I've worked for. Um, I hated the corporate lifestyle, I couldn't stand it. And when I realized that uh, the entrepreneur lifestyle was sort of like my calling, that's when I went out on my own. And I figured out through many trial and error periods and failures and mistakes that I was really good at, uh, I guess you could say, helping people bring their story to life, uh, whether it's on video or whether it's in, uh, you know, in social media. What I did was I, I, I wrote a book and it was called Dream Starter. And it was after my first startup business succeeded. My first startup business that succeeded was called Doggy Surprise. And it was a direct to home dog product service. And since I love dogs, I built my passion into like a profit making machine. And I didn't make too much money, but it did teach me about simplicity, demand, having vision. And all of a sudden, whenever I had these little lessons that I know was super valuable to the marketplace, I put it in this book and then I started giving it out and handing it out to people. And I, I learned the bestseller trick on Amazon, which seems really difficult, but it's pretty easy to do. As soon as I learned that, I turned it into Amazon bestseller. Now, all of a sudden, overnight, I'm able to get speaking gigs, attention online. I made connections much, e much easier. I was able to have this authority that I never, ever had before. That's when people started saying, listen, man, I see what you're doing. Can you help me with my book? And I said, listen, I, I'll help you, but I'll, well, why don't I just do it for you? I'll write it for you. I'll market it. I'll turn it into a bestseller. You keep building your network marketing company or your real estate agency. And they said, okay. And that's how it all started. So five years ago, fast forward till today, we've done 170 some books. Uh, we work with people all over the map. Um, but mostly right now, since I've worked with Mark Evans, uh, a lot of, a lot of people in real estate and, um, it's incredible to see how we've escalated our business to a degree where it's a turnkey operation, just like you offer <laughs> where people come to me and they say, listen, man, I've always wanted a book either for legacy, you know, for their, for their kids or for their grandkids or for just their family legacy, which is why this is so appropriate. Or, hey, I need attention. I need to go into a new direction of my life. I need people to actually care about what I have to say. And whether it's a business meeting or you're trying to get that affiliate or whether it's you're trying to get that client, a book is going to help you. And we do that for you. Dude, I love it, man. Uh, awesome, awesome story, first of all. And Thanks, congrats on all the success you've had over the past five years. I know you're just getting started, man. So, hey, it really um, is the beginning. Thank you. I know, you know. So, um, 
I, I think you make some really, really good points in that uh, you don't have to just write a book for business purposes. Like that's why a lot of people write books, but there's a lot of people out there writing books just for family purposes to create um, some sort of, of, you know, firm um, record of, hey, here's my life. Here's kind of what I went through. Here's what it was like raising you as a kid or raising the grandkids or you know, going through all lessons learned in life. And it, you don't have to go out and sell it. You can just kind of write the book. And so um, it's a really, really cool service that you offer because I see a lot of people who, you know, they want to go out and build a new business, right? And, or not build a new business, but they think like writing a book is kind of like building a business. You got to fit Absolutely. it into the cracks of your schedule. You got to dedicate time to it. You got to learn all these different processes. And there's a lot that goes to that. And what's nice is like, why not just hire an expert? It's like, I'm, I'm trying to ex, you know, expand my business and I'm trying to do all the bookkeeping and all the accounting and all the cash flow management. Why don't I just bring in a fractional mm -hmm. CFO who could do it in a fraction of the amount of time, do it much better than I could ever do it, right? And it allows me to go back to my revenue generating activity of real estate, of selling widgets, of consulting, of selling services, whatever that might be. And that's exactly what you offer. You, you come in and you're able to help people do that. So dude, I think it's a, it's a amazing service. So, all right, let's say I'm, I want to write a book and I know you're doing some publishing stuff. You don't really do kids books, but like I have kids books coming out. Yeah, and I got one. I did one just to okay. see if I can do it. <laughs> cool. Love it. And so, um, so I, I wrote the, the kids book series, little legacy library, and, um, uh, you're helping me do all the promotion and, um, publishing side of things. Oh yeah. Front. So, if I want to write a normal book, just like a, a standard, you know, 100, 200 page, 55 page, whatever size book, and it's a business book and it's about flipping apartment buildings or it's about building wealth or it's about, um, you know, some sort of business principles and I want to use it for a business book. What does that process look like to reach out to you and give me like a, like a third grade level step by step on what that, what that looks like? Yeah, great question. Where do you begin? Mm -hmm. So it all really begins. I, I have a conversation with you and I say, where do you see yourself making most of your money a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? Because people think that this book is really about, oh, what have I done in my life? But I look, I look at it as a book as like, where are you going in life? Because you need to build the book around that. Mm. So I always start with the end in mind. And then I say to you, to, I ask you, I say, okay, well, if that's where you want to go, you just got to envision how you're going to use this book once it's done. Are you going to look at it as a lead generator? Are you trying to get speaking gigs? Are you looking to do a course? Are you looking to just work with people like Tim Bratz? What are you looking to do? And as soon as they're clear on that, I say, okay, now here's what I recommend. Write down 15 generic lessons you want to teach your audience. Is it about real estate? Is it about entrepreneurship? Is it about overcoming adversity? I don't, it doesn't matter. Just 15 generic lessons. Start with that. Now, can you remember 15 specific stories on how you learn those lessons? Give you an example. People will come to me and say, listen, I want to help people start a business. Great. I'm going to use it for a course to help people start businesses. Great. That's where you make your money. What are the 15 lessons? Lesson number one, you got to have vision. Great. How did you learn that lesson? My dad taught me this. I failed at this. I got into a marriage. It didn't work out. This is what it, it taught me. Beautiful. That's perfect. Lesson story. And the third piece, a specific audience. So if you know who you're trying to reach, whether it's a man or a woman or entrepreneurs or be as specific as possible, that helps with the lingo. Now I say, listen, if you look at all the big books out there, rich dad, poor dad, art of the deal. Do you think these people who make millions of dollars are going to sit down and write their own book? Absolutely not. A ghostwriter is going to say to you now, what are the 15 lessons? Let's do a zoom call just like this. Lesson number one is vision. Okay, Tim, what does vision mean to you? Well, it means this. Okay, well, how did you learn that lesson? And all I'm doing is having this simple Q&A where you kind of spill your guts. You don't have to worry about the cameras being on. or It's just you having a conversation with me. Now, I do a little bit of a flair with all my stuff, but to completely disregard all that because all that matters during the interview is your questions or your answers being answered by my questions. After that video series of just me and you doing it for two hours one day and two hours another day, that's, your job is done for a while. I, I went over the 15 lessons you want to teach. I went over the stories. If I don't have enough content, I'm going to ask you enough questions to get that content. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You told me a little bit about this one story with your dad on the tractor. Tell me more about that day. I want to know exactly what you were thinking. What was he wearing? What were you doing? What were you thinking about whenever that happened? 
the more detail, the better, because I will sensationalize that story. So it's a, very attractive to the reader. Once that's done, I take that content with and meet with my real writer. Now I have five main writers at this moment, hiring a bunch more, but they're all women writers. There's a couple reasons for that. Women are way better writers than men. They pay attention to details a heck of a lot more. So if you look at Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki hired Sharon Lecter. Sharon Lecter is the real writer of it. Took a lawsuit for her to actually get co-author on there, but she was the ghostwriter for a while. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. We have these, this team of writers that will listen and watch that interview, write it for you in a 20,000 word book, 120 pages in a six by nine format. Okay, this is what it looks like. Very simple, six by nine, 120 pages, 20,000 words. Once it's written, we send it back to you. Now it's basically like a painting that was done um, like a, in four hours from a four hour conversation. It is not supposed to be 100% signed, sealed, delivered for you. You're now going to read it and adjust it slightly so it really fits your lingo, your narrative, and those details that mean so much to you that you maybe forgot to tell me. Now, package that up. Some people take a day, some people take a week, some people take a month, some people take longer. Whatever is, fits in your schedule. I know these real estate guys out there are super busy, but some people need this book for a big speaking gig and they'll get it done in two days and they'll send it back to me. We clean it up, we format it and get it ready for Amazon. Now, in between the interview and you receiving that book, I send you 25 cover designs. The title and subtitle is something that I'll help you out with once the interview process is done. I'm a marketing guy at heart, so my goal and my job is to help you not just get this book done, but have it marketed the right way with the right title, the right colors, so whenever you do stand up on stage or in front of someone, it's you to a T. And now I give you title suggestions, you pick your favorite title, I send you 25 cover designs, you pick your favorite cover, we make adjustments however you'd like, cover's done, book's done. We upload to Amazon under your account. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but Amazon has completely changed the self-publishing world. So if you wanna become a self-published author, it's very easy to do so. I recommend that for your first book because you want 100% ownership of this book. Once you get attention and you get a lot of people looking at you, now you can kind of market your book to publishers and you're shopping them, they're not shopping you. And it's going to be a hell of a difference compared to when you start out and you have no attention. Once you have people looking at you, it's a lot easier to get real publishers to say, listen, I'm going to help you market in all these different countries, but now I want 40% of the book. Mm -hmm. I still recommend your first book, you self-publish all the way through. Client of mine got picked up by Hay House Publishing after we published his first book and uh, it's changed his life, but he would never have got to that point unless he went through a service like me. The guy's a multimillionaire real estate, was paralyzed in a car crash, got out of it and became very successful. Now he just builds real estate all over, I think it's Europe. Anyway. So, so, so hold up real quick, Mike. Uh, so explain the difference between self-publishing and traditional publishing, what that would look like initially, and then why would somebody want to go after being self-published, why even go to publish it, like traditional oh, publishers? Great question. Okay. So, so what, what's the difference between the two first? And then let's talk about why you would want to have that relationship with a traditional publisher afterwards. Yep. Self-publishing means that you own everything to, uh, in regards to the book. No royalties are split with you and someone else. So when you self-publish, it's yours and yours alone. When you put it up on Amazon, it's yours. Amazon's the distributor, so they're going to keep royalties. But that doesn't mean you can't go anywhere else and sell the book. When you go to a traditional publisher, they are going to say yes and no to your ideas. You can't give it away for free. You can't go to certain organizations and do certain things that you want to do. It's more their book than it becomes your book. Even though your name's on it, it becomes very, very difficult to maneuver. You won't even see reports reports as easy, like reports on your sales, your back end, what's happening right away, because they will control that entire process. Mm. What's good about a traditional publisher is that now, once you do have a lot of eyeballs on you, they're going to do a lot of legwork behind the scenes to get you on TV, to get you interviews with people, to get uh, all kinds of attention that you could never do yourself. And then on the back end, they're going to help you sell the book, which means they're just trying to make money on the back end with, with, the, with the sales. Mm -hmm. So it's going to grow your name. It's going to be beautiful for you. It's just that you are going to lose control. 
And I would recommend on your second or third book, you start to worry about it. Point that I want to make here is there's a man named Anthony Lawley. He owned Rapid Realty in New York City. I worked with him. He had a company called Dimension Publishing. Whenever he called me, he said, listen, you're the, you're the bestseller guy. Can you help me out and turn this into a bestseller? I'm like, I'm just this guy in Pittsburgh. I could do this for you in five hours. Don't worry about it. I could take care of it for you. He's like, I'm with Dimension Publishing, and I'm here in a, in a room with all these different or members of this company, and nobody knows this bestseller trick. So I had to get on his conference call with a huge company to actually teach them how to do this thing. Yeah. What you're dealing with is a lot of people who are just part of an organization. They're, they're not built in entrepreneurs. They don't know all the tricks yeah. of the trade and figure out how to street fight. Uh, so you lose a lot, you, you slow down, I guess you could say when you deal with a traditional publisher, but you do get more attention with the big bookstores like Barnes and Noble. So, so you give up essentially all your rights. They then own the book, right? Yeah, well, it's a royalty split for sure. It's like 50-50, okay. sometimes 60-40. Okay. Uh, it's just but that you the, lose say-so. You have to say, hey, can I, can I do my, can take this book and do this with it? You have to mm -hmm. get permission. And so, uh, but they're going to also promote the heck out of the book, get you marketed all over the place. They're putting up all those marketing dollars, right? That's exactly right. Will they be uh, reimbursed at cost on those marketing dollars and then a split? Or is, there, is those marketing dollars coming out of their portion? It's probably different from company to company. There's many traditional publishers, a few ones that, uh, that stick out like Penguin Publishing. Yep. Uh, you know, they have all different uh, probably setups depending on how popular you are. Uh, what you really want to do is basically get an upfront fee. If you are going to be a big name, you want to say, all right, I'm going to put my name on this book, but I want a million dollars up front. And I don't really care about the royalties, even though that's important, but I want a million dollars to write the book. Uh, Gary V is, uh, is very famous for saying he hired a ghostwriter. He's written more books than he read. That's what he always says. <laughs> and, uh, and he says that uh, once he got interviewed by a ghostwriter, it takes like six to nine months on a traditional ghostwriting setup. He got paid, I believe it was a million or two million for like five or six books. Might be more than that up front. And then the royalties on the back end, who knows what the agreement is. But the, the money can be really made up front if you have millions of people looking at you. Yep. 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 Interesting. And so, so if I want to publish it initially, anyway, I know, I know we can go into a bunch of different marketing strategies, but a lot of business people do the, you know, free giveaway of the book, just, you know, it's yeah. free, just pay for shipping kind of a thing. And that's really to grow your, your network, to get your name out there and to, to build a list of people who are interested in your book and your services. And now you can then communicate with them and, and send them other offers and other, other things. So a lot, a lot of people just use it as kind of a lead gen source versus kind of a, a money-making source, right? And that's the way to go. 100%. This money that you make from this book is not going to be on the front end. Do not try to go into it in the beginning and say, I'm going to make a lot of money from book sales. That's what Important I call point. front end. Yep. Lead gen for the course, for the program, for the, for the business deal that you can make on the back end. I mean, I, I'll tell you right now, I have given away hundreds, thousands of copies of my book. I couldn't care less about selling my first couple books. Could not care less. And the reason why is because I was generating leads. You know, you're basically building a relationship with your audience. You have to do the free plus shipping. Grant Cardone's very uh, famous for doing the millionaire booklet. I believe that's his number one lead generator of all of his books. So he used it in a very smart way to get people into his funnel. And now he can market the hell out of these people. So you do that exact same thing. Russell Brunson, Expert Secrets. I don't know if you read these books, but this is all they're teaching. You got to have a front end offer, free plus shipping, or you can do a PDF giveaway, which is just your book in a PDF form and it doesn't cost you anything, but a free plus shipping cool. Does that make you look super professional? And not only do you get their email address, their address, their phone number, you know that they're qualified if they're interested in what you have to say in this book. Love it. Love it. So uh, going back to the publishing side of things, if I self publish, my first book and it's successful and I can promote it and I can do all the marketing myself. Why would somebody want to go back to a traditional publisher and then create that partnership in the future? Traditional publisher is, is going to be crucial uh, down the road. I believe it, once you get to a certain level, it, it's, you are going to want to make that move, not in the beginning, but you would want to, because now your name needs to hit another level of, of fame, I guess you could say. 
So I would, if I were you, do the first book. Now, the reason why it's so important to go to Dream Service Publishing or a company like mine is that you retain the rights to this first book, 100%. Everything you put in this book is yours. You could shop around. It doesn't mean you're just limited. This first book, when you self-publish it, it's not like you just lose all ability to go to a major publisher. But what it does do is just, it says, I'm committed enough to have this book. I mean, only 3% of people who ever start a book ever finish one because it's so much of a spider web. And just mm-hmm. by having a book, it, it, it puts you in another level. It, it, it's just, it makes you look different than everyone else. And if you can just get it done, now you have options. And all I try to do is create options for people in their life. Hey, I want to do the free plus shipping. That's great. There you go. Hey, I want to try to get on more podcasts. Great. Hey, I want to get this so I can get picked up my, by a major traditional publisher. Great. Take it. Shop around. But once it's done, now you're not just a number. You're going to have something to show for it. I love it, dude. This stuff gets me amped up, man. I love it. It's so exciting. <laughs> I know you are got to be excited because uh, of what you're working on. Yeah, yeah. So um, talk to me about like the copyright type stuff. So from a legality standpoint, intellectual property standpoint, what's important to know on you know trademarks, copyrights, all those kinds of things as you're launching these books? Is that something that like you guys would help them out with? Do you connect them with a, an IP attorney? Like what does somebody need to know on, on that front to make sure that their IP isn't stolen? Wow. Yeah. There's a lot to that. Um, I am not an attorney, uh, but what I will tell you is that it's virtually impossible to copyright or trademark a title of a book. So when people come to me and say, listen, I have this great title of a book. Uh, I got to worry if it, worry if it's, if it's trademarked or not. It is almost impossible to do so unless it's a series and a very, very popular series. If you tried to create Rich Dad Poor Dad, guaranteed they're going to come after you. Will you win? Will they win? I don't know, but they'll come after you. So 10 X, if you try to do 10 X something and it'll be the 10 X rule, I guarantee you'll hear from Grant Cardone if it gets to a certain level of fame guaranteed because he has done certain things to protect himself, but it's almost impossible to trademark a book title. So if you are, uh, unless it's a fiction book, like if you create Harry Potter, you're yep. going to get sued immediately because that's breaking uh, trademark law. Yep. But if you go to USPTO, I believe USPTO.gov, you can actually search a title. It is, uh, it's going to be one in a million if, if you c- come across a book. And remember, because it's not just like, oh, I can have Nike uh, trademark, but Nike on the book, it's going to be a little bit, uh, you're going to have some, some play. So you got to look on those forums. You can look around, do your own research and figure it out. I will tell you that when you create a, a title of a book, that's probably the most, thing, most important thing you got to worry about. Chances are that you are going to be free and in the clear, unless it's very specific to something like a Napoleon Hill Foundation title book. Right. Unless it's that big, then you got to worry. Yep. Besides that, inside the book, a couple things you got to worry about. Pictures of celebrities. All right. So you by law, and this is stuff that um, if you take a picture with someone, you could get away with it by taking that picture of the rock, for example. And we worked with someone who has, was going to get the rock to do a forward for his book. He was totally cool with having it on the inside of the book. There's a couple of laws and rules about this, but if you use it for marketing purposes on the outside of the book, now you're going to get screwed with uh all kinds of different lawsuits but if it's on the inside there's some type of some type of thing that protects you that all it is is documentation like you're just documenting your life and so you're not using it to sell the book you're documenting certain things that have happened and then you're free and clear to do that so phrases all that if you put on the inside of the book you have a lot more freedom than on the outside of the book if that makes sense interesting interesting yeah i've spent a lot of a lot of time with IP attorneys over the course of the past couple of months here, just trying to really gain a lot of understanding on this stuff. And yeah, if, if, if it's truly original content, meaning you're coming up with your own content, your own storylines, your own uh, uh, background on this stuff, and you're not copying anybody else's stuff, you're pretty much good to go, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And you know what's amazing is Amazon's getting really smart. So if you plagiarize nowadays, like imagine just taking out a book and plagiarizing it, they're going to stop you from from uploading it because now they have this database of 
millions of books where they could just say, okay, all this is plagiarized. You can't upload this. So, you know, it's, it's funny how you could actually be stopped from plagiarizing certain things, but when it goes to a, goes to original content, like what you're creating, that's why if you look at all the books that go out, like Tony Robbins, you know, all these people are saying the same type of lesson. They're all just saying it in right. a different way with a different story. Mm -hmm. And that's why books are so fascinating because even if you talk about vision, a billion other people talked about how important vision is, but the story behind it is unique. And if you add that in the book, now it's special to you and you alone. I love it, man. It's good stuff. So, um, Oh, what other questions I got for you? All right. So let's go into it's uploaded to Amazon. So we've gone through the whole process. The mm -hmm. book is written. It's been reviewed. It's been proofread. It's been formatted. Um, you created the book cover. It's uploaded to Amazon. You got the PDF version. You got the hardback or, or paperback version. Like, how does it get printed? Like, who handles <laughs> the, the you know, fulfillment? Who, like, who handles all that kind of stuff on an ongoing basis? Like, how does that work? Yeah. Do so I Amazon, do do I have to go buy a billion books and put it in my, <laughs> my living room or my garage and then ship these things out. It sounds like a pain in the butt. Nope. You can't do it, man. And it's a pain uh, to even, even think about like, what do I do with it? If it's sitting in front of me, what do I do with it? How do I sell it? Mm -hmm. Amazon figured out that if they make it convenient, I mean, if you look at all the successful businesses, it's all about speed and convenience. So they do the printing the we're on the East coast. So I know that the closest printer to me is from South Carolina. I could put a book on tonight get it approved by them by tomorrow night, order it the next day and have it two days later. Wow. One book, print on demand. Think about this guys, print on demand. So you could buy one book for, uh, for roughly what it costs to print, which is about $3. If your book is 120 pages, um, you know, six by nine, black and white interior, it's gonna be about three or $4 per copy. So if you wanna use Amazon for all it's worth, you need to, I mean, you really do need to have your book on Amazon because it's the number one book offering service in the world. 75% of all books sold in, in the world or just America are bought through Amazon, not Barnes and Noble online. It's Amazon. So you need to have it on there. And it's, it's a lot of, uh, when people research you, you want them to see your book on Amazon. Just, it makes it look way more special. So they'll take care of that. They take care of the Kindle. Okay. You, you'll have it in a dot Mobi format. We do all this for you guys, but dot Mobi or a, uh, that's probably the, the, the number one Kindle formatted book. And then there's the paperback. Remember, this is just the paperback, all these. So there's the hardcover, which is what you uh, referred to before. That's a little bit different. So Amazon does not print those, but Amazon will take care of the Kindle, the paperback and the audio book. Audiobook, we could talk about later, but once it's done, you can hire a professional to do it or you can do it yourself. So those three, they will take care of for you. And it's free, by the way, free to upload all of that. And just think about it. When someone buys your book on Amazon for $10 and the print cost is $3 and you split the royalties 50-50 with Amazon, roughly. Think about it. You're only making a couple bucks, but it doesn't cost you anything to upload that on there. It's amazing, dude. So they, that's that's... I mean, Amazon's figured that out. That's beautiful. And with the audio book, if you do your own audio, it costs nothing. They put it up there. They base the, the price of that off of what you sell the paperback for. So it's important to sell your paperback for like 15 bucks because then they'll take your audio book and say, oh, it's roughly five or $6 somewhere there. And then the Kindle version, a minimum price of 99 cents. But I always recommend that whatever you set your paperback at, you do half of that for your Kindle. And uh, when we go to upload on Amazon, so this is the step uh, that we, we go with first. We turn you into an Amazon bestseller. You probably have some questions about that. I'll answer it right here with, it's all about leverage, positioning, and timing. My assumption is, is that it's very similar to real estate, leverage, positioning, and timing. So if you leverage your network and you position one of your books in the right category on a certain day, and then your network buys that book in bulk, at that exact moment, it's going to hack the algorithm and say, hey, this book is selling really well. Let's make sure this keeps climbing the charts. And through a little bit of research, we're able to figure out what the sales rank is. Sales rank is that little number at the bottom. Hey, you're number 415 in this category. All we do is do a simple, I guess you could say, a little bit of research on that category 
and we figure out, oh, all we need to sell is 30 books in an hour to beat this guy. All right, 30 people buy this Kindle version at 99 cents in an hour. Hacks the algorithm, puts you at number one. Now you are an Amazon best-selling author, which is going to be an accolade that will live on forever. I love it, dude. That's so good. <laughs> so that's that. Does it need, does it need to continue um, on an ongoing basis? Or is it if, if 30 people buy it in that one hour, then you get the accolade and you're able to stamp it on your book. And because you were a best-selling author for at least that day or that hour or that whatever, um, you get to sustain that message forever, right? Forever. I mean, when you win the, the Super title. Bowl, you're a Super Bowl champion forever, right? You know, so you have to win it every year. Uh, it's the same thing with this book. You just hit it one time. Now, Amazon did this on purpose. They want people to promote you're an Amazon best-selling author. I mean, there, there's a game. You, you're, he, they try to gamify this for sure. They try to cut down on all the noise to stop people from understanding the game. But uh, once you hit it one time, it's something that you could use forever. Think about all the books from the 80s that are, were number one New York Times best-selling author books, all this stuff. It'll still have the stamp on there, but 20 years later, it's gone. I mean, they're not even on the charts. So New York Times is doing the exact same thing as this, just on a huge level, just on a, just a massive scale. So they'll go to Barnes and Nobles and all the bookstores and they say, hey, put an order in for this book on this day or this month. And that way we know this is going to be a number one bestseller because when it hits number, there's, st there's studies out there. You guys can look it up, but once it becomes a number one bestseller, people buy it in like in droves. So it's just like a, a tool for every book out there. Once you hit that, it just adds validity to the book and more people will buy it. That way you can get on TV shows and, and you just look way, way more uh, unique to the, to the audience. You can game it all, man. So it's it, all it is. Is there a way to, so there's a way to hack New York Times bestseller too then, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, people have come to me and they say, listen, man, I know a guy who spent $300,000 on his own marketing to get a book. He can't even come close to it. And, and if you look into it, uh, it's a very political game. When you get to that New York Times setup, the number one best-selling author in the world who's self-published will not make that. Who's the best-selling book, if they're not picked up by a major publisher, are kind of discredited. So, and there's, there's all kinds of lawsuits about that, that um, a couple people have done really well self-published and they still never even come close to that list and they know they beat the other people. So it's, wow. it's, it's, there's a, there's a game to it, but it, it involves playing with the big guys, the big publishers. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It's good stuff, man. So how would you suggest then, uh, let's say I had a business book and now it's available, um, real quick on pricing. You said essentially whatever you price the paperback at the Kindle version should be about half of that. Right. Correct. And then uh, an audio book would be about a third of that. It sounded like, yep. um, and then hardcover that's double 10 bucks more, five bucks more. Yeah. And I, I don't think I ever answered that question uh, thoroughly, but when you go to a hardcover, now you have to use a third party printer, which we recommend. Uh, actually there's two people we recommend, but depending on what you are, what your strategy looks like. There's one in particular where it's going to be connected on Amazon and it's the hardcover version, which is really, really, I mean, it's phenomenal to look at. It's just a novelty piece. Think about as a consumer, when you go online, do I want the hardcover that's 20 some dollars or do I want the paperback, which is 15 bucks? Do I want to pay more or less just for a harder cover book? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it all comes down to your strategy. I like the hardcover if you're dealing with high level clients, because if you sat down in front of someone and you're asking for a million dollars and you say, listen, just read my book and you're that, that, that book costs you $20 and it gets you the deal. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing that, it's, it's kind of a waste unless you're going to have it as like, you know, marketing materials for videos, for pictures, and you're going to go and you're going to go on the beach and you're going to have a hardcover. It looks really cool. And that's what I recommend people to do if they want to spend the extra 500, 600 bucks to set it up and then the $20 every time you print the hardcover. Awesome. So that's amazing. Um, so everything's good to go. Books written, been published. Uh, it's on Amazon. You got the printing all set up. And um, uh, how do you promote this now? Instead of just buying books or hoping people go to Amazon and buy it from Amazon, what would you do from a promotion standpoint? Um, once it is an Amazon bestseller and you've hacked that algorithm, uh, in order to actually sell these books and really get it out to the masses, are you 
um, advising on the marketing side, you know, to go buy sponsored Facebook ads or um, are you, are you driving people more to like their own websites? So now they don't have to pay the um, 40% royalty to Amazon or whoever the other uh, printer is like, like, what does that look like? Yeah. So once again, it goes back to that strategy they have in place, that vision of how they're going to use it. I try to coax people into having the free plus shipping or the lead generation somewhere. Um, but step one to me is, okay, I'm going to have the click funnels or the lead pages or anything set up, ready to go. The almost the, the spark to all this is, okay, you have all the books. Okay. Buy in bulk from Amazon. You can buy 20, 30, 40, 50 different books for about two, three, four dollars a piece. Get them shipped to your house. And now guess what you could do? Mail them out to your favorite podcast hosts. Mm. Okay. So now, Hey, I got this new book. Phenomenal. I can't wait for people to hear about this. You could either send the friends, family, or podcast hosts, or all of the above. So what you're trying to do is now light this, this, this fuse of this, this bomb that's going to explode and see everybody sees pictures of people holding the book and having the videos. And now you're going to get on podcasts. So that's your marketing strategy that, that is so easy to implement. You don't need to know a lot of people. It's just, okay, there's a lot of podcast people I listen to. Maybe, maybe Tim Brotz would want to see this book that I just put out regarding real estate. I hope so. Let me mail it to him. Tim, what's your address? Let me mail it to you. So now all these podcasters have guests that they can invite on if they have books because books are make you relevant. You have something to promote. If you have something to promote, you can always stay relevant. And and I, and I, and I say to people, just get out there and start doing the podcast. In addition to that stuff that you could do right now, get your aunt, get your uncle, get your brother, your sister, take pictures of them holding the book. And now you can start putting on your social media. All this stuff is really free. By the way, mm -hmm. you just got to buy the book. Now you have that. Now you can start to do press releases. We help people with all this stuff. So whatever I'm teaching you, I, I either do, or I can guide you the right way, but press releases, you can go as little as 50 bucks a month up to 500, up to 2000, depending on how crazy you want to get. Now you have press releases. You're basically hacking Google because you're going to get on Yahoo finance as a press release and start to look pretty relevant with this book. So now that's there. The goal though is still to get people back to this funnel. And now you're gaining you, when you put out a hundred bucks or a thousand dollars, you know that the return on investment is not the sales on Amazon, even though that's a bonus, it's not the main goal. Your main goal should still be, okay, I need to make this business connection. I need to get this, this uh, person in my funnel. I need to help these type of people. I'm trying to create this course, consultation program, whatever it is, that's how you always have to keep steering people back. And it's a work in progress. But when you start to put the book out there, just think of it as, is just, you know, a magnet for eyeballs. And that's not going to be the moneymaker. The back end is. And I try to help people out with that as much as possible. Depending on the industry, it becomes very difficult. If you are in the fitness world and you don't know the direction in life and you don't know if you should market it towards your gym or you want to do some type of product, it, be, it can get messy. But if you're in real estate, like most of your audience is, mm -hmm. it should be clear as day. Because your name is very, very important to either investors or to buyers. And the more people know about you and your commitment to your craft, the better. So that's why I say just use it as like a bomb. Just keep throwing it into the rivers. Keep creating waves by giving it away, by promoting as much as possible. I do not recommend the Facebook ads. I do not recommend the Instagram ads for the book. I do it for your service. Talk mm -hmm. about your service and say, hey, if you're interested, I'll give you a free book. That's what love that. Love that, dude. So good, man. Good stuff. So how long does it take to, to write a book? To start to finish. What's the fastest you've ever seen it done? Yep. We've done it in 17 days. First, our, one of our fastest books we've ever done. So that's 22,000 words. It was, um, so we do people books in, like I said, 30 days. So if you mm -hmm. come to me, what you do is you make a deposit. Our, our cost is $10,000 right now. So if you came so, to me, and say, Listen, <laughs> dude, do you realize that you need to increase your, your chart, your pricing? I, I because know, I know Mark Evans. I don't know if you guys all know Mark Evans, but yeah. he's been telling me for about six months. I, I know other companies that do something similar, probably not even to the extent that you do. And they're charging twenty five to a hundred thousand dollars. We're gonna get there. I, I told Mark. <laughs> I, I told Mark. Tim, I swear to God, I was I was twenty five hundred dollars when I started this, like four and a half years ago, almost. You know, so it took me it took a, two years to go to five thousand, and then another year and a half to go to seventy five hundred, 
And I met with Mark and I, I said, listen, man, I don't know if I can take it to 10,000. He goes, oh, yes, you can. I said, well, my audience isn't there yet. $7,500, we're doing a book a week. And he said, uh, do it. Watch what happens. And I'm telling you right now, it has just changed the business completely. I'm able yeah, to man. grow my marketing team, my, my writing team. Uh, so yes, we're going to keep going further with it because it's not just about the price. It's like, okay, well now I can offer this and I can go to this and I can do this with it. So we're definitely up in it for sure. I love it, man. Anyway. Um, yeah, so it, it's $5,000 down. We interview you two hours, one day, two hours, another day. And after that, your job's done for a, for a couple of weeks. And then when we send you the book about 20, 25 days later, that's when you review it. Uh, you pick out your favorite cover. I'm telling you, all my work for you is done in 30 days. Guaranteed, never missed a deadline, 170 books, done. But if you do it on your own, you could spend years. And I will tell you, and I'll be as honest as possible here with you, if you sit down and write a book for 15, 20 years, it'll probably be better, a little bit better than the books we put out. But there's a loss of, uh, I guess you could say, that. what's your return on investment with that? Yeah. You missed out on 15 years worth of attention and, yeah. and leads. And, and so every book gets a little bit better. Mark Evans is putting out his eighth or ninth book right now. And it's obviously you see his story gets better. And I talk about, you see everything I do. And I want to get to this. When you put a book out there for your first one, it's not going to, don't look at it as the end all be all. You should put a book out every year because you Love should that. be excelling in life and learning new stuff and giving back a little bit with the knowledge. So every time you do something, you get a little bit better, a little bit faster with it. And then it's a chess move. So now you can move this in a different way. Oh, I don't want to mm -hmm. talk about business. Let me talk about vision and mindset, and leadership and courage, you know, all this cool stuff. And when you think about your first book, I always talk about this to people. You see it all over, the, all over my website. Don't look at it as like, oh, I got to write a book. Think about any time you sit down to write a book, you're the hero of your own story. If you're going to sit down and teach a lesson, tell a story about something that you did that you're proud of that's going to help someone else. <laughs> You're the hero of your story. And guess what? If they read it and they do it and they apply it to life, they could become the hero of their own story. So mm -hmm. get excited about something that uh, is going to live on forever. And that's why I say get it done, get it done right away so you can use it as an asset for life. I love it, man. I love it. So much good info, dude. So, uh, Mike, what's the best way that people get, get a hold of you? Yeah, so the, my website is dreamstarterspublishing.com. However, guys, anybody on here, this is very special. If you are if you listen to Tim Brott's uh, his podcast or if you follow along his social media, Cashflow AF, right? I see that everywhere. Cashflow AF. <laughs> Dude, and I, I work with a lot of wholesalers. Everybody says Tim Brott's is killing it on Facebook. So if you guys are out there listening to this or watching it, I want you to go to, and this is the website that I built specifically for this, mybookhero.com. Mybookhero.com forward slash Tim Brott's. Reason why that's important is because I want people to go there. If they've listened to this, I know you're part of the Tim Bross family. I appreciate that, dude. So that's awesome stuff. So much good insight. And uh, again, like I, I don't have people on the show that I haven't already done business with that I don't like intimately know personally. And um, and dude, I appreciate all the value that you've given, not only on the show, but given to me over the past several months that we've been working together on, uh, on releasing my own book series and uh, all my children's books and all the people that uh, you've helped out that I've kind of connected you with as well, man. So you're an absolute rock star. I love what you're doing. And I love, uh, again, the value that you're giving to the world. So appreciate you. Thank Brent. you very much, man. It means a lot. If you have any questions, reach out to me, guys. But uh, I'm here. I, I never want to screw up for uh, for people in your circle. So whatever I can do to help, I'm here. It means a lot, Tim. Thanks so much. Awesome. Mike, I appreciate you being here, man. I hope you guys got a ton of value out of that. Um, I mean, I, I've talked to Mike several times over the past several months on hour-long phone calls over and over and over again. And I'm taking pages of notes as we're, <laughs> as we're sitting there. So, so much good stuff, man. Thank you again. And uh, until next time, we'll see you guys on the Legacy Wealth Show. Hey.